Good morning, my name is Dr. Missy Shardy. Um, today we are going to be doing a dental cleaning on our friend Mabel here. Um, so we just kind of want to walk you through the process of what happens um, when they come in in the morning um, prior to their dental cleaning and then we will also walk you through the dental cleaning and how we do that and all of those types of things. So right now we're going to start with our preoperative exam. We do this on every patient when they come in um, prior to anesthesia. Um, she's already had her blood work done, but if she hadn't already had that, we would go ahead and draw a blood sample at this, at this point and make sure her liver and her kidneys and everything are, are working properly before we put her under anesthesia. Um, basically because those are the organs that filter out the anesthesia and all the medications that go along with it. So for her, we're going to go ahead and start, just take a quick look at her, make sure everything looks nice and healthy. Um, check her color on her gums, make sure she's nice and pink, uh, make sure there's no um, swellings in her lymph nodes or anything like that. Uh, and let's take a listen to her heart and her lungs, make sure everything sounds normal in there um, to make sure that she's going to tolerate the anesthesia okay. So we'll go ahead and do that. And on her, everything sounds really good. Had she had a heart murmur or something like that, there are some additional tests that we may consider doing, um, like x-rays or an EKG that we can send over the phone to a cardiologist to evaluate. So those are some of the things that we would do additionally. So at this point in time, since she has got normal blood work and her heart and her lungs sound good, we're gonna go ahead and give her a pre-medication um, kind of like a sedation to just kind of take the edge off, make her a little bit calm down so that we can get an IV catheter in. It's just a quick poke and then we'll give her about 10 minutes for that to make her nice and relaxed. Oh, Mabel. Good girl. I'm one of the registered technicians here at Suburban Animal Clinic and I'm going to be doing Mabel's dental today. As you can see, she's feeling the effects of her sedation. She's a little bit calmer, a little bit sleepy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put in an IV catheter and that just gives us a way to give her her anesthesia and also to give her some fluids while she's under um, just to keep her hydrated and keep her blood pressure up. So we're going to start, we're going to clip a little bit of hair. up the vein using a little bit of uh, antiseptic. has her IV catheter in, we're going to go ahead and give her her anesthesia. Let me see. 
little sleepy, the next thing we're going to do is put in a breathing tube, and that's going to give her oxygen and gas anesthesia to keep her sleeping during her procedure. Mabel's going to be breathing gas anesthesia and oxygen. they're under their anesthesia, the next thing we do is we hook up all of their monitoring equipment. Dawn is hooking up the ECG, that'll monitor her heart rate and her heart rhythm while she's under so we can make sure everything is nice and healthy. And then we have a respiratory monitor hooked up and that just keeps an eye on how much she's breathing per minute. Make sure that that's good. And then we'll also put a pulse oximeter on her foot. And that'll tell us how oxygenated her blood is. Since she doesn't blink while she's under anesthesia, we have um, some artificial tears ointment. We'll put that in her eyes just to keep her eyes nice and moist and she won't be blinking. The next thing that Dawn is doing is she's hooking up the IV fluids. And that's just going to keep her hydrated and keep her blood pressure up while she's under. Gives her a little bit of electrolytes. First thing we're going to do is we're going to um, start to evaluate her teeth before we start cleaning just to see if there are any problem areas that we're going to need to, um, you know, potentially x-ray or that we're worried about needing to take out. Um, at a previous dental cleaning, she had these two front incisors pulled. You can see those are nice and healed over. Uh, so what we're going to do is we have a dental probe and we're just going to kind of check around her teeth to make sure that there's no pockets, meaning that the probe goes way up under the gum line. That would indicate uh, some dental disease that we need to check out further. She's got a lot of tartar on these teeth. All the gums so far look nice and healthy. I don't see any loose teeth, which is good. So the first thing I'm going to do before I start cleaning is I'm going to take a little bit of this. This is chlorhexidine. It's just kind of um, an antibacterial mouthwash. I'm just going to kind of wash the teeth with that. That's just going to help keep um, a lot of this bacteria from getting aerosolized when we start cleaning. We use an ultrasonic scaler to get the tartar off the teeth. And that just uses high frequency sound waves and water and to kind of blast this off of here.
Since Mabel's an older dog, you can see she has some wear and tear on these molars here, but there's no um, nerve showing. It's not bleeding, so it looks like they're still in good shape. It's just something that happens when they age. I'm assisting Donna with her dental today and that I am monitoring anesthesia for her patient. Uh, it's very important that we keep an eye on them throughout the procedure and manage several different parameters just like they would do to a person in the hospital. So I have our anesthetic record where I'm writing down various factors, uh, one being her ECG or her heart rate. I'm monitoring the waves, making sure there's no arrhythmias and the number is good. 87 is a good heart rate under anesthesia. Uh, her pulse oximeter or her oxygen saturation, we want that to be above 95% since she is on oxygen as well as the inhalant anesthesia. 96 is really good. The respiratory monitor beeps every time she breathes. We want her to breathe no less than twice a minute. Three to four times a minute is great. So she's breathing roughly every 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, for some reason, she does not want to breathe under anesthesia. I would then breathe for her uh, with the oxygen. We're also monitoring her blood pressure. Uh, we get both a diastolic and a systolic rate, so the same as they would do with us in the hospital. So that is attached to her leg. Uh, another important factor is body temperature. Anesthesia can cause the body temperature to get low, as can IV fluids. And the fact that we're working around the mouth with water while we're cleaning her teeth, all these factors can lower her body temperature. So we want to keep that body temperature um, as normal as possible. One way that we do that is keeping the patient covered with a towel during the procedure. We also use rice socks, which is just a tube sock filled with uncooked rice. We pop those in the microwave for a couple minutes and they hold uh, heat for a little while. So we'll put those near the patient to help keep the body temperature normal. We'll also take her temperature throughout the procedure. If her body temperature gets a little low, we'll add some other warming factors to keep her body temperature up. This side of Mabel's teeth are all clean. We got all the tartar off. Everything looks really good. Uh, we also took off the tartar on the inside of the other side. Well, we can see it real well. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to polish her teeth, just like they do for you at the dentist when you get a cleaning. We do the same thing. Mabel's lucky enough to get some mint paste today. What we do is we're going to polish all the surfaces of the teeth. That gets rid of any pits that are left in the enamel from the cleaning. And that's going to keep plaque and tartar from sticking. Also makes her mouth smell minty fresh, which the owners always like. that off with some air and water. Alright, 
And that side of her mouth is all done. Okay, we just flipped Mabel over to start um, cleaning her teeth on the upper left side. And what I noticed when I probed is this uh, first upper molar has a lot of gingival recession. You can see how the probe kind of goes up in there between the roots. So what we're going to do next is we'll take an x-ray of that tooth to see if it's abscessed or loose or if it's a tooth that she may need to have extracted today. All the other teeth on this side, though, look pretty good some digital dental x-rays of that upper tooth that I showed you. Um, the plate just goes in the mouth just like when you get your x-rays done. Here we have a little um, x-ray unit here. I'm going to go ahead and take that and see what it looks like. Since it's digital, it allows us to play with the brightness and contrast a little bit so we can get a better view of that tooth. And in just a little bit, when Dr. Shardy comes back and does her oral exam on Mabel, she'll evaluate that x-ray, and we'll see if there's any further treatment that needs done for that tooth. Donna has done a fantastic job of cleaning up Mabel's teeth. I'm going to go ahead and do a thorough exam of her oral cavity, checking all the teeth, checking underneath the gum line, uh, making sure I don't see any cavities uh, or any periodontal disease that go along with um, the dental cleaning. Also, I'm looking for anything abnormal like oral growths or tumors, um, gingival issues or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with just a dental probe. And I know Donna's already kind of gone through this, but we'd just like to have a doctor double check. This is the tooth that she was questioning that had some issues with a little bit of gum recession, um, a little bit of pocketing around the roots of the teeth. And um, I, I took a look at the x-ray and I don't think that there's anything um, concerning on the x-ray as far as periodontal disease, but there's definitely some gingivitis. So we'll give her some antibiotics to see if we can help clear that up a little bit. But everything else seems to be nice and clean, no fractures, um, not a lot of pocketing around the gingiva. Um, so that's basically all I'm looking for, any loose teeth. It's pretty common for them to have loose um, incisors as they get older. They just kind of lose the bone that holds that um, tooth in there, but hers seems to be pretty stable. So I'm just going to kind of go through, check everything, make sure everything looks good. I like to look, you know, back in the back of their throat, make sure I don't see any problems with their tonsils, um, you know, their pharynx and that kind of thing as well. So um, check the inside of all the teeth. And then once I finish this side, we'll go ahead and check out the other side as well. We'll flip her over and I'll check the other side and make sure I don't see any issues or any problems that need to be addressed. So luckily for Mabel today, everything seems to be cleaning up pretty good with it, without any extractions or anything like that. So um, if there were issues, we would certainly go ahead and take care of um, any extractions. Um, sometimes we can put um, antibiotic gel up inside um, pockets and those types of things. I don't think she needs that today, but we do have those capabilities. There are other clinics that can do things like root canals and um, more extensive dental work. We just We just don't feel like we have the capability to do that here, but you know, if somebody was interested in that, we could certainly get them to the right place. So from this point, you know, everything looks really good, and we're gonna go ahead and have Donna finish out what she needs to do um, to finish up our dental cleaning. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give her an injection of an antibiotic. Anytime these guys have a dental cleaning, we're breaking free all the bacteria and, and you know that can potentially go into their bloodstream and cause a systemic infection. So she'll also get an antibiotic injection today. Dr. Shardy has checked out um, all of Mabel's teeth and said they're healthy. Uh, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on some fluoride foam. And what that does is that helps to strengthen that enamel, keeps bacteria from wanting to stick, um, helps prevent uh, plaque and tartar formation. Uh, what we're gonna do, it's just like a mousse. 
what we do is we just paint that onto the surface of the teeth and it's going to sit on there for uh, about three minutes. This product also has a really nice cherry scent so it makes their mouth smell wonderful. Okay, it's been three minutes, so it's time to go ahead and get the uh, remaining fluoride off of Mabel's teeth. We don't want to use any water because that'll wash it away. We want it to stay on there as long as possible before she eats or drinks or we rinse it off. So we're just going to use some air and just kind of get rid of the extra fluoride. And finally, we have a product here called Oravet. And what that is, is that's a sealant for the teeth. Um, we seal them here after every dental procedure. And then the ideal situation is to go ahead and continue that product at home. And that's applied between the teeth and the gum line. And that's going to keep uh, future plaque and tartar from being able to stick there and build up the kind of calculus that she had on there today. So you want to apply it to a dry tooth. So as I go, I'm just going to kind of dry the teeth off a little bit so it sticks better. And then we're just going to apply this wax right at the gum line. So this is our completed dental chart for Mabel. What we do is we have a before side or pre-treatment versus the after side or after we clean the teeth. So on the before side, you see there's a couple of teeth colored in. Those are teeth that she was missing when we started the dental that either she didn't have or were pulled out previously for um, a reason. So what we did is we grade the calculus and tartar buildup. So she had a moderate calculus tartar buildup on the top. The bottom wasn't quite as bad. Uh, you can see we marked the tooth that Donna was concerned about that we x-rayed. That once Dr. Shardy examined, we decided was good and didn't need anything done with it. So on the after side, we just write that we did some fluoride in the Oravet, which was the sealant that Donna did. If we had had to extract teeth or do anything else, then we would note that on that specific tooth. Um, on the bottom, we just graded the gingivitis, uh, which Donna graded at about a 1, which was not too bad. We have seen... Uh, gingivitis grade two and three, and we would mark that and keep an eye on that for the future.